No place else is Venice, and that's where C-Mac and I are today. Coming to see what we can find biting in the canes. Come along with us. I got a EWG, so chances are good I'm gonna lose one in the canes. Then I'm gonna get f***ed off and cut it off. The current is so whiffed. We is rolling. All right, I'm starting with my beloved Zimmer Swimmer in California 420 color. Got that under a 3 8 ounce bullet weight with the sinker pegged. A necessity for down here in Venice, even though this particular shoreline that we picked doesn't have a ton of cane in the water. C-Mac is throwing a, what is that? Something I poured myself. Oh, what, a homemade bait. Yeah, that's the uh, Carnarvon Craw color. Carnarvon Craw. Water's definitely murky today, much murkier than my last trip down here. We'll see if that matters. There's been a lot of boat traffic in this area and you can definitely tell there's a kind of a donut of dirtier water close to that shoreline because this water is out. So those waves smash into that muddy shoreline and suspend that silt in the water. A lot of bait in here though. A lot of bait. A lot of bluegill, needlefish. That ain't taking off. Oh, see Mag, you got one. Look at that. Was that your second flip? Yeah. Good bass too. Really good fish. Up the tar out of it, Todd. No, look what I had, C Mac. <laughs> look what I had. Yeah, you see right here, it's 12, 12 and a half feet. <laughs> it drops off incredibly. Man, it's hot. The wind feels nice. I'm glad it's blowing. Get him! Oh, flounder! There we go! <laughs> it looks like he's on the drop off, too, huh? Yeah, he's out of the way. I've been wanting to catch a flounder down here in Venice. They've been running for sure. And with these bats, all right, I definitely want him. Where you at, Todd? I'm telling you, man, you're up 2 0. We're gonna hit this cut and then go to the other side. Colors, right? They're not gonna come out exactly like they did from the factory. But if you group them into. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Not as big as the one C Mac caught, but it's a bite. The fish this year have been little for the most part, but you know, it's still the heat of summer. Once having a crazy heat wave so you can forgive him for being a little small but you know it's not a bad fish and we're fishing one of the major passes down river which is kind of the best strategy for the summertime when water temps are up water in here is 88 degrees you can imagine what it would be in some of the more backwater smaller areas these fish stay in these main passes because they're more oxygenated a little bit cooler i heard that Yes. That's where that bass was right here. There he is. <laughs> See, Mac, I'm going to get all these small ones out of the way for you. But I tell you, this, this is what we caught last week. A lot, of, a lot of bites, just not an average Venice fish. Like, this is a subpar Venice fish, that's for sure. But you know, you just take bites this time of year. I'm not complaining at all. All right, that's a fish that we were back there and we heard him splash right here. At least I assume it's the same fish, exact same area. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Venice, there's a place you definitely want to come do this on a falling tide. Far better than a rise, not even close. I won't come on a rise unless I happen to be down here and just want to go fishing. But it's a lot better on a fall. And not only do you want a falling tide, you want the second half of a falling tide. The last six hours or so of that fall, which we're here today, tide's gonna bottom out at 5.30. We didn't get down here till about one o'clock, so that tells you how important I think this is. Fishing during the heat of the day, and it is blazing hot. Been a super hot summer here in South Louisiana. 93 degrees down here, Tide, and it's 10 degrees warmer in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yes, indeedy. Yeah, it's relatively cool here, 93. This summer's been dominated by west winds, but today we actually have a southeast wind. You could count the days with southeast winds this summer on one hand, no question about it. Now this shoreline has one thing going for it. There's no water behind what's accessible to us, so that's good. One of the negatives of this shoreline, there's not a whole lot of cane in the water still. So those fish don't have a whole lot of current breaks. So we're just going to give it a little while longer and then switch to the other side. The other side looks a, a little bit better. Yeah, we're going to catch them on this side. This looks good. It looks real good. Well, perfect. 
It's it's absolutely criminal that the average U.S. citizen cannot. Do. There he is. That's a little bit better. By a little bit, I mean little bit. Long skinny fish for Venice. There are a few things more fun than flipping these canes. And this happens whenever the river gets low, below five feet at the New Orleans gauge. And it's been low for a, a few weeks. Got low really early this summer. Shows no sign of jumping anytime soon. So that's good news. And the fishing can get really, really lights out, particularly as you get closer to that low tide. And some things that are absolute definites are stout line. I'm fishing today 40 pound braid. I fished 30 pound on my last trip and broke off three times. So I upgraded to 40, hope I don't break off today. <laughs> and also you need at least a medium heavy rod. Please. Heavy would be better. Size of the fish so far this year, medium heavy is fine. That's what I'm throwing here. So Kuma Psycho Stick, it's got some backbone. You put way up in that stuff? Yeah, I typically do, yeah. That's the fun stuff to pull them out of. Some pests you have to deal with when you're flipping these canes or crabs and brim. The brim will peck you to death some days. But the good news with that, when you get in an area that has a lot of brim, you're generally in an area that has a lot of bass. So you just got to tolerate the, the brim hits. You might set the hook five times for every bass you catch, but it's worth it. Usually you stay pretty active when you get in an area with a bunch of brim. And the crabs will just cut your bait right now if they're a pain in the butt. All right, a little better fish. Maybe, I don't know, a little bit under a pound. <clears throat> oh, he got off. That's what happens. You get that extra wide gap hook and it gets snagged on these canes. Fish canes, all the leverage and you lose them. Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. I can't. There we go. There we go. There go. Hung up in the cane. That's a good bass. Nice fish, dude. That's a good Venice bass. All right. Fish of the day so far. And he didn't get caught in the canes. Oh, C Mac. What the heck? Redfish. Gotta be. <laughs> Look at C Mac's rod. Yep, redfish. All right. Well, that was the fish of the day till C-Mac caught that red. Well, really, the fish of the day, C-Mac, was that flounder. You need to net him? Look, net right by your feet. Uh, I'll Don't snap your rod, dude. Big boy. You want him? Yeah, just let him go. All right. So, literally, C-Mac and I caught, those, caught that red and bass in the exact same spot. Common occurrence when you're fishing the canes. You just literally don't know what you're going to get. Probably not a speckled trout this time of year, but come back in the fall and it's definitely a possibility. Come here in late October. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah. November. Yep. So awesome. Just so awesome. You got to get down here and do this while it's going on. And this is just August. I mean, it's going to get nothing but better. This is like the worst time because of the heat. These fish are least likely to bite now. And look how much success we're having. I just like the way those fish down here look. I do too. I'm with you. Particular color green. Yes. And a particular particular build. Yeah. They are very unique looking bass. And C Mac and I are fishing an entirely different shoreline from the last time when I was here. And I've never fished this shoreline ever. Just kind of came down looking for what looks right. And what looks right is a lot of canes in the water, but not a lot of water behind the canes, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't, but like this is what I mean about a lot of canes in the water. You see stuff like this, a bunch of blown down canes. That's what they like to be under. But you can also see the shoreline right behind it. So there's not a lot of area for these fish to retreat to, to hide from you. They're pretty well exposed. And Venice bass are so aggressive that you get a bait in front of them, almost invariably they're going to hit it. Just no place like this. Oh, <laughs> I missed him. I blew that. 
one of them. I blew that. Came back with a stick. This isn't really black and blue water, but I've made the switch to this black and blue Zimmer Swimmer, and man, they seem to love it. Water's got a slight stain to it. It's not perfect, but it's it's pretty close. Actually, it probably is perfect with that slight stain. Sometimes down here, it can get just absolutely gorgeous. And although C-Mac has a ton of experience bass fishing, he hasn't been bass fishing in Venice a whole lot. Made a trip or two with our buddy Jeff Brühl and one or two trips with me, and that's it. So what do you think the draw of this is? Like, what, what do you think the, why is this worth the trip? I mean, I think there's a couple of things for me. Number one, it's just sort of the close sort of combat nature of it. I mean, you, everything's kind of at your feet and you gotta be pretty precise. Like you gotta hit targets. It's a different bite than, uh, than say something you'd get in the Atchafalaya Basin or fishing a reservoir or fishing around cypress trees. You don't often feel the fish stump it. You flip into heavy cover, you feel that tension on your line and you slam them. It's just a totally different kind of fishing. You know, if you've seen videos or TV shows of guys pitching that heavy, heavy stuff in Florida around Okeechobee, this is what this is like. Like this is right at your feet, heavy line, drag locked all the way down, heavy tackle, and just ripping them out of this junk. As I mentioned, it's August. And so, you know, fishing really nowhere is prime in August, not anywhere in Southeast Wales, it's just too hot. And we're still having no trouble catching bass, redfish, and flounder flipping these canes. It's just a magical place. It is. Venice, when the river's low, it's just magical. It just is. Well, a lot of folks don't realize that the river being high a lot of the year, or sometimes, you know, in the last decade, it's been high most of the year. But the river being high part of the year is a big reason, maybe the biggest reason why it's so good when it gets low. Yes. Uh, just because there's so much food in here. All the crabs, the crawfish, the brim, the shad, the mullet. I mean, everything, those fish are eating all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah, that's a very good point. You know, fishermen often talk about how good fishing is when the river's low. And it's, it's true across a lot of the Southeast coast, Southeast Louisiana coast, crab got me. But the fishing is so good when the river's low because of that high river. That's what fuels everything. You know, for some reason, the river's actually controversial in South Louisiana right now. Just mind boggling to me because the reason we have such great fishing down here is 100% because of the Mississippi River. Now, is the fishing great when the river's at 17 feet of New Orleans? No, it is not. It can, it can mess up some areas, make them filthy, take some time for it all to clean out, for the bait to move in, the game fish to move in, etc. But that high river is what fuels all this and makes it so good when that river falls out. It's gonna be a special year. It'll be a special fall down here. The fishing is very good now. It's gonna get great and it might get stupendous. How's that for a elite word? Fantastic. Can you think of a better word than stupendous? Word. Something better than stupendous? I mean, I'll take stupendous fishing any day. Yeah, to tell you how much I like Venice bass fishing, Venice is a two and a half hour drive one way from my house. And I find it hard to stay away when the fishing's like this. But how many boat launches do you pass? Uh, right. Your house in here to get yes. Here. Where I could have, you know, decent to great action. Quite a few. Coming up with some good looking stuff, C Mac. Let's get some bites. Ooh, you hit it. Are you still on it? Yes, you are. Oh, you mother fricker. Dad gummit. <laughs> and why did I lose him? Extra wide gap. That's why. Dude, I got some other hooks. I know. I'm gonna change this one. Oh, you dirty, dirty, dirty <laughs> God. Oh, I'm on a bad streak. I realize I'm fishing behind you, but I'm not getting near the bite you. I'm getting bites when it's not. It's the Zimmer Swimmer, dude. I'm telling you, this bait is magic. It's the Zimmer Swimmer, which I got plenty of. Get him, C Mac. There you go. <laughs> Wrapped him around the boat seat. All right, changed camera batteries, tied on one of those narrower hooks. Definitely less chance of these getting hung up in those canes. And so C-Mac's gonna take the point for a little while, run the boat. 
I'm gonna see if I can sweep up some leftovers. We're definitely in an area that seems to be holding a few fish. Fishing should only get better in here as this tide moves along. Pull the Todd. Ooh, man, I was over some stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Women with it. That's when it's fun, yanking them through that stuff. God dang! <laughs> Alright, come take the trolling motor again. I gotta retire. Okay. A lot of brim on this shoreline. I've seen three or four of them. Should be bass. Right bass. Yeah, I can't get bit, man. I ain't gotten bit in a while. Yeah, a what did we just say? <laughs> See if it works for you, buddy. With my small hook, it worked. There we go. Game C Mac. It's about the size we're catching, on average. All right, C-Mac and I are wrapping up the day, throwing baits along sunken rocks here at the mouth of Baptiste Colette. Sometimes reds and even flounders stack up on these rocks, and sometimes bass. Mostly reds and flounder, though. So we're gonna see what we catch here today. Fish on? What's he feel like? No, oh, oh, I broke off. Redfish. Shoot, C Mac, I got smoked and broke off. Really? Yep. A little bitty redfish. Whatever hit me was big. I, I, that had to be a big red that hit me. Oh. Missed him? Yep, I did. You got him? Feel like another red? Yeah, another red. A baby. Oh, look at this big ship coming, loaded with containers. Oh, there he is. Look at that, C-Mac, a jumping redfish. Good to see these little fish. Good to see there's some. I got one. Well, there's nothing but undersized reds in here. But there are a lot of them. There are a lot of them. I had something big break me off on my SP57. <sighs> and now we're just catching these guys. Nope, look. What you got? Different species. Oh, white bass. There we go. There All is. right, C Mac. You wanted a white bass, you got a white bass. I'm going to eat these too. Yes, I'll eat the white bass. This red wanted this thing. Yeah, I know, dude. Uncle Todd not treating you right. There you go. Swim off. Now, unfortunately, we've got a massive container ship coming right there. So this bite's quickly going to come to a close because I won't be able to hold here with my trolling motor and don't want to take the chance as close to these rocks. But I'm going to make one more cast. Oh, there he is. That didn't take long. That feels like a better fish. This is, this is something else. Man. This is as good as it gets, man. Every cast. I think I got one of your white bass. No, it's a red. No, it's a red. Never mind. Same species. See, Mac, I say we retreat into Baptiste Colette, let these waves pass, and then come back. What do you think? We're about to get shellacked. Think we got time for one more cast? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Probably pretty stupid. These waves are going to be nasty. Oh, I mean, right away. Oh, oh, right away, missed it. Another red? No, white bass. White bass. 
<laughs> see Max on the white bass. And we're about to die. We're about to die. What are we gonna do, Bart? We're gonna die. Easy, Harold. My foot is on the rail. And all the water's yeah, sucking out. out you see all the water sucking out? Yeah. Ooh, Lord, where are we gonna go, Tom? All right, let's go. Come on, we're about to die. Let's go. This is stupid. Ain't worth it for a fish. All right, great news. C-Mac and I survived the container ship, and now we're singing Christopher Cross songs, seeing if our fish have left. Just you wait and see. C-Mac is singing sailing. I prefer a ride like the wind. And I got such a long way to go. Such a long way to make, make it, it to the border of Mexico. And I ride like the wind, ride like the wind. Da, da, da. This trolling motor is humming. It is on 10. Oh, the canvas can do wonders. Can do miracles. Miracles, you're right. Just you wait and see, Just buddy. Just you wait and see. Not in love anymore. Oh, missed him. Now, I bet you that was a white bass. He smoked it. Things will never be the same again. I can't forget how you made that so clear. I can't forget it. Every time you're near. <laughs> Every time I see you cry. Smile. Always Hear your hello. This is what's real. If this is what's true, tell me how come I can't get not in love Damn container ship, they're biting every cast. I'm you. I hadn't got a sniff. Yeah. Well, there he is, C Mac. Don't know what he is, but he's a fish. Hey, he's running. Running and running. Look at this guy. Oh, your white bass. No? Yep, there. ripe white bass. There we go. Now these white bass are really good to eat. They are. They're comparable to largemouth bass. Yes. They don't taste like sackle. They look a little bit like sackle, but they don't taste like them. But they are very, very good. So, I knew you were going to do that. You got. And they do have sharp gills, so be careful. Much do. This guy's coming home with us. Yeah, that's important to mention. You know, obviously we had that container ship pass. You do have to be careful of the big ships. And the crew boats. The, the crew boats are absolutely worse than the big ships. Now, when you're in the river running, they'll usually slow down for you. But a lot of times they don't see you. They're on the other side of the river or whatever. Those are the massive wakes. So you do have to be careful if you plan to come down here and then closer to the winter, you also have fog to deal with, but it's just such a magical place. Well worth it. You know, I'm in my Avid 19XB, plenty boat for the river. It's not, not a problem at all. I used to come here when I had a 15 foot with a 25 tiller. Probably a little undersized for the river, but I was smart about it. Everything was fine. And there are spots like this all over this river. You want to look for the washed out rocks like this. You get on those toward the end of a falling tide and it can be just really, really silly. Obviously from Empire down. Yeah, from Empire down. Obviously the reds are catching. Oh shoot, I just missed him. The reds are catching today are all undersized. But you know, <laughs> keeper sized reds have been tough to come by in Louisiana. Not that we don't have them, obviously we do. But uh, I've fished these rocks, this stretch right here before and done really, really well on slot sized reds. Today they're all undersized, but you got the white bass mixed in. And if you bring your tagging kit, you can tag these little fish, see where they go. And I had a giant UFO hit me. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but it was big. Broke me off. 
All right, C-Mac and I are gonna go ahead and call it a day. Great trip down here to the mouth of the Mississippi River. As I mentioned earlier, it's only August. Fishing's gonna get much, much better down here, even though it's already phenomenal. Get on down here soon. Start getting familiar with this place so you can be ready for it when that fall run really kicks off. It's gonna be ridiculous this year. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Mass on channel on YouTube. If you know somebody you think would also enjoy the video, definitely would appreciate you sharing it with him. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, We'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.